Brandon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can make yourselves make yourselves at home. Have a seat. Uh, you know, it means a lot uh, for everybody to be here today. It always, always uh, means so much that basketball season, I know it seems a long ways away, but it's just a very, very short ways away. Uh, I, thank you, Brandon, for everything you do. Chip and Manny Rowe, uh, the living legend of New Orleans media. Thanks. Uh, Lakefront Arena, Marco. David, I saw uh, Mr. Lindemann running around, Roddy and his staff. And then my staff, uh, Kenyon and Chris are on the road recruiting already, and Kerwin Forges. Uh, who I'm very, very proud to have coached and worked with is here. So uh, Mike Hill, is Mike Mike still here? Mike, thank you for all you do. So uh, our student athletes are here. I'm, I'm excited for you guys to meet them and talk to them. And, of course, Katie's uh, restaurant, Chef Scott, his wife Stephanie and their family, is, it's a, always good to have them part of it and partner with us. Uh, the renaissance of our program, you know, it continues. We're blessed and humbled to be a small part of this you know, dynamic university with, with Dr. Peter Foss leading us and, uh, and under the leadership and direction of our athletic director, Derek Morell, it means so much. Uh, you, the new students are rolling into campus. It means so much to see them. It means so much to see the progress on campus when you guys uh, get on campus and you see our privateer enrollment center on the first floor. Uh, you see uh, and learn about our new student retention programs that are going on. Uh, it's an energized, exciting campus to be on. You see uh, the new uh, first NBC uh, ballpark at Maestri Field. You see the renovations there. Uh, it, it still gives me goosebumps to be able to work and talk to Coach Maestri every day and, and glean everything I can out of him. Uh, it's an amazing time uh, to be here and work here. You, you guys that were here last season, you got a chance to go through uh, the year with us and, and see uh, a, a season that had a lot of ups and downs in, in an interesting year. We played the toughest non-conference schedule in the nation. Uh, the number one at the end of our non-conference tilt, we were the number one rated uh, schedule in the country. Uh, we played some of the top teams in the nation, including Michigan State. Uh, we picked up a huge uh, victory at one of the toughest places in the country uh, to get a win at the University of Texas, El Paso, uh, which was a great night, great benchmark uh, for us and where we were uh, just two short years ago to be back and be able to get a victory like that was a huge step forward for us. Uh, you think about our league play when our first year in South and Conference play when in the middle two-thirds we go eight, eight out of 12 and get playing at a high, high level. And we got contributions from a ton of guys, uh, including our young uh, sophomore class that this year, which was a freshman class last year. Uh, you look at, at, this, at our opportunity this year. We've got a year uh, where we're going to play at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. We got a chance to go play one of the perennial powers of college basketball at Indiana University. We get to play former Holy Cross Tiger Billy Kennedy and his Texas A&M Aggies. We get to go visit a Big 12 member in Texas Christian uh, in Fort Worth. We get to play our former Sun Belt rival in the University of Denver, mid-major power Southern Illinois, and the University of San Diego. So it's a very, very exciting time for us, uh, coupled with a very, very tough and rugged uh, Southland Conference schedule, uh, which you'll see and go into further as we go into it. We got an exciting group of, 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 of student athletes here. I couldn't be more proud to coach these guys. Uh, returning this year, we got a senior, Terrence Sion, who's had a tremendous period of growth uh, this summer, uh, has really, really stepped into his own. Juniors Kevin Hill, uh, who was second in the league in rebounding in conference play last year and tied for first in offensive rebounding. Sharpshooter Evans Ganapamo from Mandeville and junior Travis Avery from Country Day. You know, our sophomore class got a ton of experience last year. Uh, Tevin Broil started 17 out of 18 games for us in league play. Chris Davis Gill from Alexandria, Louisiana, uh, averaged double figures. Nate Fry came off uh, an injury early in the year and ended up playing valuable minutes uh, as our backup point guard and local product Dalton Glapia on redshirted for us. Uh, and he'll be in that. Uh, freshman class this year our incoming freshman class is dynamic you're going to see size out of these guys we've got an opportunity to have five guys in this class at Bryce Jackson at 6'8 uh, Kenneth Terry who's our lone small guy of the group uh, from Baton Rouge and McClendon High School Trayvon Thibodeau at 6'8 from Brule High School Colton Weisbrot at 6'4 from Nederland Texas and Mike Zeno at 6'6 uh, from Beaumont Texas so we're really excited about the size we're excited about about how they uh, will help us project and move very, very quickly uh, within league play. On the floor, we're incredibly proud uh, of where the program's going and how we've made huge steps in a short time. Off the floor, 
uh, is just as important. You know, we, we, a few years ago, we were in a very unique situation, to say the least. In a short time, in our last academic progress rating the NCAA puts out, we scored a perfect thousand in our academic score, which is, which is obviously tied with the top of the nation. We continue to reinvest and partner in our community, uh, like with the Special Olympics event that we did a couple of weeks ago where we had a record 72 uh, participants from around the metro area. Uh, we annually partner with our National Day of Service with the Baptist Women's Fellowship House uh, in the Maroney and Harbor Community Church, Second Harvest Food Bank, and our upcoming youth clinic with the All Souls Community Center in the Lower Ninth Ward, which will be next week, which will host those kids here, over 50 kids. So we're very excited about that. These experiences give the student athletes more than just basketball, more than just the world-class education they get at UNO, but it's going to prepare them for life and humble them and, and prepare them uh, to take the next step in life. So we're very, very excited about the direction of the season. We're very, very excited about uh, where the schedule is going, and we're excited to play a very high-level uh, national schedule that puts UNO back on the national map again and again and again. Uh, I hope that you guys take time to, to meet our student athletes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm lucky and blessed to coach them. They're dynamic kids. They're very, very well uh, spoken and thought out, and I hope you guys take the time to meet them and visit with them. Uh, we'll have some on this side and some on this side. Hope you get a chance to come up and, and take a chance and, and meet them and talk to them and get to know them. Uh, you'll really be impressed and happy with them. Uh, I got to also recognize my top recruit. Uh, I'm a good recruiter. You can see all these guys over here. I'm a great recruiter, but my best recruit is in the back, my wife. So I'm glad she came. Uh, so she's she's all American mom and, and first team uh, all world wife. So I'm glad she came. So. Uh, so I'll open up, Questions. open up the floor for questions, if anything. I guess for, I have a quick question for you, going, uh, getting a chance to coach at Indiana, and obviously mm -hmm. you're coming there, how does that make It's a really big night. You know, my family, to say they're passionate or fanatic about Indiana basketball would be an understatement. It would be, uh, per se, going to Baton Rouge and saying that there's some people that like LSU football. Uh, so, you know, my, my, my family cried when Coach Knight was let go. So it's pretty, they're pretty serious about, about it. And it's going to be a big deal for, for me. But then our assistant coach, Chris Arkenberg, is from, you know, a stone's throw from Bloomington. So it means a lot to him, too. But more importantly, it gives our guys a chance uh, to play at the highest level. It gives them a chance to play on national TV, on the Big Ten Network. Uh, it helps us tell our story again and again about where we're at and where our program's going. Uh, but it'll be a big night for us, and you know we're expecting to go in and play at a high level, and uh, we're not going in there to play to lose. So. And also, I mean, I heard you had a, got a kid from Ely, another kid from Beaumont. Um, obviously, you guys started in the South from last year. Mm -hmm. How how vital was that to the program? I mean, the fact that you can go into that market and, and get kids that you know like get a chance to play with Kawan or with their family. Mm -hmm. It's very important. I think you know our our recruiting footprint is always going to be in the metro area first. And then I-10 going Houston to, to probably uh, Gulfport or Mobile, and, you know, in the state of Louisiana. I think that's always going to be our main recruiting footprint. And, you know, Coach Spears being from that area and having played and worked at Lamar gives us a, a, a quick step ahead. And I think it's a, it's a very fertile ground and it's an under-recruited area. And we're blessed to get both those guys and have them. And I think, you know, guys being able to play at home and, you know, Chris Davies obviously being from Alexandria and being able to play uh, some teams. The Southland's just a great fit for us from a geographic end from that, pers for that perspective. Coach, last year you had a pretty encouraging year. What would you like to see in terms of growth uh, this season in particular? Well, I – like yeah, I mean, our coach – not to use coach speak, but, I mean, obviously we want to win the championship and we want to – add to the incredible legacy of NCAA tournament and NIT history that this school has. Uh, but more than anything, we've got to continue to learn how to compete every night. We've got to continue to win on the road, which I think when you look back on our year and you look at what we accomplished, probably winning on the road at that level that we did with, with really a new team uh, in a lot of ways was as big an accomplishment as any. It's a, such a tough thing to do in college basketball. But we've got to continue to come off of this tough non-conference schedule where we've got six on the road and three at home and be able to come out of that and steal a couple on the road to come out 500 to parlay ourselves into that early uh, league play. And, and we've got a tough stretch in that, that right in that first third uh, of the league uh, play again. But we've got to continue to grow. We've got to rebound the ball at a high level. And we've got to keep in, uh, pushing to where we're peaking in February to be able to compete for, for the league championship. I think you'll see when you look at the roster, we've got a very, very young team. 
you know, really, uh, we're going to have seven, eight guys that are freshmen, sophomores um, of our, you know, 13 or 14 guys total. So we're going to be very, very young, but I think we'll be dynamic and I think we'll play with a lot of energy. It'd be fun to watch. We're going to be, yeah, a lot bigger compared to where we were, you know. Uh, you know, I think, you know, guys, people that saw us before, I think they saw Kevin a year ago, and Kevin was one of our bigger guys. And now, you know, Kevin just looks like another guy, no disrespect. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, he's, 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 he's got guys more at his size. Uh, and so it's, it's good to have a bigger team. And, it, and we'll play a little bit, maybe a little bit different than we have in the past um, to, fit our, to fit our personnel and, and strategically to have a little bit of advantage. Uh, but I think when you see our team, you're going to see a big, long athletic team that, that can put, we'll have guys that we can put in a lot of different positions, which will be interesting and fun. You talked a little bit about the trip to Indiana this year. Uh, what do you think the team gains from uh, playing against programs, you know, mm -hmm. on that stage with that much tradition? Well, you always want to prepare them to, to not just go to the NCAA tournament, but, but to win at the NCAA tournament. And I think the more times we can put our guys in a high level atmosphere, uh, in, the, in, a big stage, the more it prepares us for that day when it comes. And I think that's more than anything what it is. The second part of that is that when they get my age uh, and they don't run and shoot as good as they used to and they're a little bit aged, and that's the memories that they want to be able to talk about. And when you look at selling a student athlete experience at the University of New Orleans, the city sells itself. There isn't a better city in the world to live in. There's not a better city in the world to go to school at. Uh, the culture, the food, the music, everything that goes with it. But then when you add in, you're going to play the best people that you've always wanted to play growing up and, and travel the country coast to coast. We're going to play in four time zones this year, so you're going to play across the country, and we're going to take our, our brand of basketball and show it to everybody. I think that part of the student-athlete experience, I think when, when – we sit down with, with, with Derek Morell, AD. That's a big part of the vision of what our student athlete experience is. I guess we're the last thing. How, how much uh, um, do you think that carries over as far as uh, you did have, you had a young team? Mm -hmm. Guys that got a chance to go to the Big East State last year. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you think you'll have carried over from that with the guys you have? I think, I think it'll be big. The, I think that was the reason we were able to have so much uh, success on the road in league play. Uh, because those environments that we were going on the road, we had already been there. And the other thing that I thought, you know, my staff did a really good job at, at doing the schedule, and they, you know, they helped uh, match up styles of play on these non-conference games last year and this year that will mirror what we're going to see in the league play. Uh, so, you know, we played some half-court teams that were very, very patient. That, that'll be similar to two or three of our opponents in the league. And so we had done those scouts before. And so when we got to the conference play, it wasn't a new scout. It wasn't a new preparation. They'd already been there, done that. And I think playing at that level at those big places, you know, really prepares us for a chance to, to be in the fight to win a league championship. Because if you don't win on the road, you're not going to win one for sure. Well, all right. Make the call on the food. We'll go ahead and let, uh, if you guys want any one on ones with the guys, let's do that. And then uh, media and uh, our guests, you always eat first. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll eat well after you. So thank you guys for being here a lot. Again, it means the world to me. Thank you.